We'll still stay in Nigeria. And talking about Nigeria, the Nigerian Senate has summoned the economic team of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu over Nigeria's poor economy, hunger, and depreciation in the value of Nigeria, especially in Naira. Recall uh, that last Friday the Senate invited the central bank governor, Olayemi Kadoso, but after the, he appeared before the House of Representatives members, uh, the Senate shifted the invitation and asked that the entire President Tinubu's economic team appear on Friday, 9th of February. Now, similarly, the federal government yesterday convened an emergency meeting to address the spate of uh, protests in some parts of the country due to rising cost of food prices across the country. The meeting, which held yesterday at the State House of Abuja, was presided over by the Chief of Staff to the President, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, uh, and is coming on the heels of a protest by angry youths in Mina, the Ninja State Capital, and in Kano over the rising cost of living in the country. Well, the Christian meeting, attended by members of the Special Presidential Committee on Emergency Food Intervention, was aimed at arresting the brewing crisis as a result of the soaring prices of food items and, of course, its attendant uh, hardship on the citizenry. Well, this morning, we'll be joined by activists who actually are one who has been um, championing good and quality leadership uh, she is also the co-founder of hashtag bring back our girls movement if you recall and she refers to herself as an active nigerian citizen uh we do have with us aisha yusufu thank you so much and we say a or good morning thanks for being here okay aisha um well just help us unmute your device so we could hear um that um, uh, exciting voice of yours <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I didn't know I was still muted. It, I would it, say Naibia, Abe from Esako, my own tribe. Correct. Well done. Okay. Okay, that's good. Thank you. All right, so um, <laughs> it's Wednesday morning. Um, we know what's going on currently in Nigeria. And as we speak to you this morning, I, I wouldn't hold back and go straight to my question so we can get this, uh, this whole uh, conversation on the road. Um, how has it been like, especially as a Nigerian and as an activist who is indeed looking at uh, the growth of the economy? And what have you to say concerning the current situation that we find ourselves? Uh, so first of all, uh, I will just give uh, this to say that I'm not an economist, so I might not be speaking from an expert point of view. I probably will be speaking like an, as a Nigerian and a businesswoman, a trader, who is being affected uh, by the economy. But before I go on, I, I was listening uh, uh, to what was being said earlier. I, and the part that struck me was the part where it was said that if anyone expected anything different with the election, that means the person is living in a dream. Like I actually wrote this down, or oh, you should go kneel down at the corner of your bedroom. Honestly, I expected different. For me, as a Nigerian, I will never, I will never succumb to a place where I say this is Nigeria and criminality is supposed to happen. I will never succumb to a situation where I say this is Nigeria. Election should be a do or die affair. Election should be about killing, about maiming, about abducting people. Because the moment we do that, then we give room for perpetrators to continue to do what they're doing. I refuse to believe that I'm not worthy as a Nigerian. I'm not worthy of a country that works for me. I refuse to believe that as a Nigeria, I'm not deserving of a country that works for me. I refuse to believe that as a Nigeria, I'm not deserving of good quality life. I refuse to believe that as a Nigeria, that what I'm supposed to do on this earth is just to survive and to and, and, and not and to just be surviving instead of living. I be, I want different in Nigeria, and I believe Nigeria can be different. Nigeria has everything that 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 is needed to be a great and amazing country, to be one of the top countries in the world. It's not about religion. It's it's not about ethnicity, it is not about gender or whatever, it's about human beings being able to live very well. Having said that is to say, we look at the economic, economy today. I'm a businesswoman. I started my business in the year 2000. I used to go to Dubai to go and buy uh, things in Dubai and sell in Nigeria. At the time that I was going, dollar was about, I think, 103 naira, the first trip that I made. By the time I was doing my second trip, three months later, dollar had gone to 113 naira. And by the time I was doing my third trip, it was around one, uh, within a year, 120 uh, naira. And... This is where we are today. Dollar is one, uh, one, around 1,004, something 1,005. 
If you look at it, if you go to Dubai today, as of that time, Dubai dirham was about uh, three, is it, uh, to dollar was about 365, 366. 3.65, not 365, 3.65, 3.60 dirham. I'm sure if you go to uh, uh, Dubai today and still check, it will not be, it will still be within that range. Definitely less than uh, four dirham to, to to a dollar. That tells you everything. That tells you the difference. As a businessman, who this year will be my 24th year of doing business, I can categorically tell you that I've never had it this bad. I've had times, even during the last recession and, and everything, it's never been this bad. There was a time that I, I placed order uh, for some goods. Before the, the order, before the trailers came to my warehouse, a, a, some of the products, they had increased price more than three times. Today in our warehouses, you do not sell. By the time a customer is coming to buy something, you're calling the source to find out how much is it that they are selling this product, otherwise you will not be able, uh, you, you will sell the product and not be able to replace uh, the product. Today you find situations like things that are supposed to be basic necessities in life, they are now, they are now, what do you call it now? Uh, they are now luxury. People can't afford to eat eggs. People can't afford to buy chicken. A lot of things that are supposed to be basic, they are not lost. People are suffering. The uh, disposable income is no longer available. It is very little uh, and sometimes not even available to a lot of people. And yet, we have governance. Governance is continuing as if it's business or, or uh, as usual. I was one of those who supported the removal of uh, sweat subsidy in, in, in 2012 when it was done under President Goodluck Ibele Jonathan. Even up to today when subsidy were, uh, was removed, I support subsidy removal. But now I see the point of a lot of people who were on the streets uh, in 2012 where they said if subsidy is removed, that it is the people in government that will continue with that corruption and looting and wastage of money and that it is not the people that will benefit with it. A decade more later, I'm actually saying that they were right because at that time I was saying why don't we fight the corruption why are we putting subsidy on luxury when we have as of the time that that subsidy was uh, removed I was I was a transporter one of the businesses I was doing at that time was transportation I had trailers that were going from Lagos to the north and I was buying diesel diesel wasn't subsidized it still isn't subsidized and I was like why are you not subsidized what is used to run the economy we're subsidizing what is used for luxury but today we are seeing wasted we say we are seeing Presidential looting today, we are seeing all sorts of all sorts of things going on with uh, 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 by those that are supposed to be government are in place while the people are suffering, and that is not the way to go at all. People yeah. are really suffering; they are dying at this moment. Yeah, um, uh, hearing you talk about you know how long you've been doing business and you know trade uh, going from here to Dubai, and of course the dollar exchange rate, you know, make almost make you sound like one of those that the uh, CBN governor was referring to and uh, the APC government is referring to, you know, that is making the exchange rates continue to skyrocket because you continue to create too much, you know, dependency and demand for the dollar. Um, they've also mentioned, you know, and I'm going to share that it's opposition parties that are instigating mass protests to undermine the government. Uh, if you remember the MENA protests and I think also in Kano uh, of, of people uh, protesting against the government because of poverty and hunger. Uh, but the APC government says that it is the opposition parties that are instigating these protests to undermine the government. And I think I, I, I saw um, Felix Mock, I believe, yesterday say that it was unpatriotic also uh, to be a part of these protests. So I, I want your, your quick thoughts um, when statements like that are made. Is it unpatriotic? Uh, uh, okay, so I will start with the issue of my going to Dubai uh, for business. First of all, when I went to Dubai, I used my private money, uh, my hard-earned money. Uh, I would uh, put our money together, and I used that to go to Dubai to go and do business. It's not the when the CBN governor is talking, the CBN governor should know about Nigeria that took over a 1,000 delegates to go for climate change summit in Dubai using public funds and paying people in forex. That's where we are, uh, we're wasting our, our monies. When the CPN governor is, uh, was talking, did he talk about the fact that at this moment there are countries, I think Argentina is also one of those countries that said they are no longer going to be doing, uh, going on these uh, uh, trips out of the country. There's also an African country, I've forgotten that one right now, that said because of the economy in the country is putting a stop at it. But right now, uh, we, we have a lot of our, 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 our government 
uh, uh, officials, public officials going abroad to use our dollars to go abroad and do all of that. When he's talking about forex, Nigeria currently is wasting money on what you call it now, refineries. Refineries, people are being paid in NF NMPC for doing nothing. Refineries, people are being paid. We have refineries all over the country where people are being paid. They are not doing anything, and yet we are going on to go and import fuel. We import petrol into this country. Uncle uh, that is supposed to, that is has a refinery. We've heard that now he's going to be buying crude oil from out of the country. That is where the dollars are, are going to it. So it's not an Aisha that was going to Dubai two years ago. There was something also that the CBN uh, governor said. He, he made mention of the fact that education and medical uh, tourism have really affected. And I totally agree with him in, in, in that aspect. But the thing that he forgot to mention is the fact that the Nigerian government has failed has failed to give, provide good quality education where uh, as citizens will be able to have access to good quality education here in Nigeria. So the issue, the hypocrisy where they send their children abroad and they expect that our own children should stay and get, uh, uh, how do I put it now, not as good quality education so that the way that they have enslaved us, their own children, we enslave our children. It's not going to happen. My children, don't, my children don't school here. And I will talk about one. My first son, my son is dyslexic. Dyslexia is a learning disability. In Nigeria, in 2013, we had to make the, the very difficult decision, myself and my husband, to send him abroad. Why did we send him abroad? Because Nigeria did not have the capacity to be able to take care of educational needs. And so we had to send him abroad. That kind of a child, you want me to leave him in Nigeria so that he will not be able to be useful to himself or to the society? That's not going to happen. So instead of blaming other people, let them blame themselves. On the issue of... Uh, on the issue of protest that is going on, I, I know I laughed and I wondered when it, it was written by the APC, uh, from the APC National Secretariat, and I wonder when they were doing protests in 2012, 2014, and, and, all, and all of, uh, sorry, 2014, 2015, were, were they instigating or when protests were going on, were they the ones instigating? And by the way, Protest is a constitutional right. The opposition parties do not need to go through anyone to go and do protest. They can sit down on their own, wake up in the morning. They decide that every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they are going to be on the Nigerian streets protesting. They have a constitutional right uh, to do that. And the suffering that we have today, nobody needs to tell anybody because everybody is feeling it. This is not a protest of empathy. This is not a protest of some people are being killed or something is happening. Let's protest on their behalf. No. This is a protest test of survivor. It is the people who are feeling the pain that are coming out to protest. And I tell you something, nobody is going to tell anybody to come out. Nobody is going to do placard. Nobody is going to do t-shirt. People will feel the pains on their own and they will come out on their own to protest. So they better begin to think about what they're going to do. Excuses are like shoes. You always find the one that fits and stop the excuses. Mm. Well, you've, you've said um, the government needs to stop the excuses and then needs to, um, of course, get to work. Uh, the president has been away for, you know, a few days, and he just got back um, yesterday. Um, a lot of people are saying that uh, it wasn't right for him to have traveled, especially when the, uh, the, the country is uh, going through a lot. Um, and he hasn't even spoken to Nigerians, especially regarding the, um, uh, the protests, the killings. But, of course, um, one or two things are being put in place, especially with uh, those who are close to the president. Uh, my question to you is this. Um, with the current situation Nigeria finds itself, um, if you were the president, what, were the, what are the things that you think uh, should be done and should be put in place now? So first of all, uh, nobody reeks to give anybody good governance. Nobody reeks to feel the pain of the people. Nobody who has empathy is going to reek. Uh, if, I, if I was the president today, the first thing I'll tell you that the process that would have brought me in as president would be extremely transparent. Uh, if it is a process that would be excellent, I will not in any way uh, try to undermine the electoral process, try to rig election. I will let the result be. If I win, I win. If I don't win, I don't win. Having said that, the next thing also is first of all, uh, the first thing that I would have uh, uh, done is to speak to the people and let the people know exactly what is the current state uh, of the economy as it is. Uh, the, the second thing, of course, is to ensure that I'm always listening, I'm always there. Uh, third, crude oil theft has to be stopped. I would have stopped crude oil theft. Those that are stealing, anyone that is part of it, taking out, out of it in the way that 
they are they are retrenched. If if I have a chief of Nava staff that investigation has been implicated that he is the reported that is uh, part of the 170 million bribe scandal, he's not going to still be the Nava uh, chief. He's going to uh, to be replaced. If we're able to stop that food oil, that would be something. Every leakage, corruption leakages around all of these things, whereby people are shared uh, are sharing billions of naira. You find out that they, they, they call it one this, uh, this thing they, they call it uh, consultancy fee. Somebody is getting seven hundred million naira as consultancy fee to 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 verify social register. That definitely is not going to happen under an Aisha Yesufu presidency. We are not going to have that. So block up all of these things and begin to see, fight the insecurity. Go after the terrorists. Nothing like lip services, nothing like excuses. Every of our military, equip our military, ensure our military that they are getting the right uh, allowances they are supposed to get. Their lives are insured. They know Nigeria have their back. They know, God forbid, if anything happens to them, we are going to take care of their family. They they're going to put their all in defending Nigeria. They're going to be patriotic because if we're able to take care of that terrorism, we're going to open up the economy to a very good extent. Right now, people can't go on the farm. I, I, I've been selling chicken feed since 2002. Uh, yeah, 2002. So this year will be my 22nd year of selling uh, chicken feed. And I can tell you, I see now when I was crying, people were insulting me. Now the Poultry Association of Nigeria is actually crying and said that 50% of their of their members have closed down their shops. So and we don't have maize. We import maize into Nigeria. We import wheat. Make sure that the insecurity is taken care of. People are able to go to the farms and farm putting a lot into, into agri. These are basic things. They don't. They are not rocket science. And most importantly, empathize with Nigerians. Show the people that you got their back. You care not just about you alone having siren and going on private visits and all of that. Let the, and most importantly, I would not be going anywhere for any medical care. I will stop any foreign trip or whatever. We need to sit down and fix our economy and ensure that we have a country that works for us, that is on the path of working. Like I said earlier, and most also most importantly, it's not to put corrupt, I will never put corrupt people around around my in my government. People who are, who are part of corruption in one way or the other will not be there. What we will have will be people with competence, character, capacity, people who are patriotic, people who have courage, people who are going to put Nigeria first and for us to begin to move Nigeria. And in my presidency, I'm not going to work for me to be praised today, for some psycho fans to be praising me. I'm going to work in such a way that a hundred years from after, uh, after I'm dead, there are people that will look back and say, mm, thank God that Nigeria had a, pres uh, a president called Aisha Yesu. Yeah, well, um, I don't know if you're running, uh, well, as of today, you're not running for office. Um, but you know, no, I'm not. maybe sometime in the future. Okay, As yeah. of today, I'm not running for office because I love my time. I love my freedom. I love to wake up when I want to wake up, do what I want to do. That's why I've never worked for anyone. I've always done my own business. And so if I get to that place where I want to be accountable to the people, then I will run. Then when I do that, I will serve because it is about service. It's not about going there to enjoy myself. If I want to enjoy myself, I should do it uh, out of this. But one thing that I'm very categorical about, and I'm going to repeat it again now, I, uh, I, I shine in Sifu, by the grace of God, will never, never, ever work in anybody I take any appointment, whether be it minister or those SS, whatever they call it. No. The one that I can manage in serving the people will be an, uh, an elected office, even if it's councillor. And if the people say, Aisha, we don't want you to be our councillor, I'll pack my bags and continue. Right. I've always said this, I'm going to repeat it here. We need people with second jobs in politics. What we've done in Nigeria is that we've left politics for people who don't have any job other than politics. And when they get there for them, it is a do or die affair because they don't have anything out of politics. And it is from politics and that we get people that are going to govern us. So still, we staying out of politics have been very foolish and we all need to be part of it. And you don't need to run for office for you to be part of politics. Yeah. Um, I mean, probably a good time to, you know, also ask, you know, because I, I, I've seen that you did mention that Nigeria currently doesn't have a president, doesn't have, you know, um, a government. Um, would, what would you say to those who, you know, may, uh, asking that you maybe give the government a little more time? I mean, it's only been in office for a couple of months. It's not like it's a, a magic wand 
that is going to be, you know, a move and then things will get better or things will look better. Um, so would you give the, give the government a little more time? Give them a year, give them two years or something. So, so, you know, you asked me earlier, there was a question you asked me earlier, and we sort of like reflect on this, which is to say, what will you do now if you were president? And I think I will add a couple of things for you. There are a couple of things that don't need time. You understand? Yeah. It's, just like, it's just like you saying, we shouldn't have had this interview. Let's give each other more time. Would, we, would anybody be seeing this interview? Nobody would see it. So excuses, remember I said excuses are like shoes, you understand? Or me coming here, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm telling you that give me more time. And then you say that, oh, Aisha, oh, she did a brilliant interview because, you know, she needs more time. There's nothing like that. It's about, first of all, doing the needful. When I say, uh, first of all, for me, this government is illegitimate, and I have my reasons, and I've made, I've made that reasons categorically very clear. In case of how did you come into election, as far as I'm concerned, civilian coup, and military coup, they are the same, and the world should see that as the, as the same. Having said that also is that when you now force yourself uh, on, on the people and you're not doing anything, there's nothing like give two time. Are you going to give time to the people who have been, uh, who have been killed? A father and his six daughters uh, uh, were abducted. And guess what? One was killed because he couldn't pay ransom. That, the one that was killed, we, we, we've ha had reports that her results from school came out. She made a first class. Does she have time? No, she doesn't. A 13 year old was killed because her parents couldn't pay ransom. We have 50 something uh, 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 people that have been they were on their way to a wedding with the bride and everything, a, a, a wedding uh, entourage. They were abducted. Some of the videos have, have started coming out. Are we talking about time there? People are dying. Are we talking about time there? Here we have, but when it comes to corruption, why is it that all the monies that have been looted, we saw what happened. Even the Minister of Interior, uh, Minister of Interior, is also indicted in it. His own company got about 700 and something million naira to do, uh, what is it, verification of a register, consultancy fee. But, uh, what time are you looking? Why didn't they give themselves time to not do all of those things? He comes out today to tell us that, oh, he's not a director. According to the law, uh, he, he, he removed himself as a director, but he's still, he's still the highest shareholder. I'm a business person. Removing yourself as signatory and as director doesn't mean anything. The company still belongs to you and your wife. And you got over 700 million naira consultancy fee over register. How many people were given the, was the, were the jobs made public? You had about 3 billion naira that was shared with, with less than 10 people, shared all of this thing. Did they take time to do that? When they were going to Dubai with over a thousand uh, entora, did they take time not to spend public funds? Why is it that when public funds is being wasted, no, no time is taken? But when it comes to giving good governance to the people, then we begin to talk about time. Mm. People are dying. And they don't have time anymore. You and I can have time because we can afford three square meals. But I can tell you, there are a lot of people who can't afford three square meals. We should be thinking about them, not about ourselves. All right. I mean, um, uh, uh, due to time, we'd like to um, carry on this conversation. But let me just uh, drop one last question for you. Uh, my question to you simply is, um, a kidnapping seems to be um, the order of the day. Uh, we're seeing what's going on as well in terms of um, the cost of living. Uh, a bag of rice going for 70,000 naira and the likes. Um, do you foresee a way out of this, especially with um, uh, the, the plans being put in place by the current administration? Do you foresee a way out of it? Well, I, I don't know if uh, any plans being put in place uh, uh, according to uh, whatever this illegitimate uh, government uh, that we have. But definitely there's always uh, a way out of it. The reason why the kidnappings have increased is because, one, we have given an uh, uh, enabling environment for uh, for the government uh, to continue, for the Nigerian government to continue to abdicate uh, its responsibilities. And of course, this illegitimate one uh, came in and continued with the abdication of our uh, responsibility. We've also given an uh, enabling environment for the perpetrators, the terrorists, the, the kidnappers to continue to be more emboldened and come after us. I remember some years ago, uh, the terrorists even dared that they were going to kidnap a sitting president who was a former general. And yet, the whole Nigerian security uh, 
our agencies, military, and everything. We are not deployed to go after them. So if they can threaten a sitting president and nothing will be done. I remember when Tankara boys were abducted, and it was the same day that uh, the then president had gone into Katsina and is some hundred of kilometers away from his village. And for me, and I kept shouting, I said, for the fact that a whole Nigerian uh, president, the commander-in-chief, the CNC, was going back to his village. These people were not scared of uh, and aborting that mission. It means that they do not have any respect uh, for our security agencies and our military. And they abducted those children. They worked, they worked with them for, for days. And, you know, at the end of the day, we weren't the ones that were actually able to uh, uh, rescue them. So we've given them enough room for them to, to, to be more emboldened every day. But if you ask me that, do, is there a way out? Absolutely, yes. Nigeria, Nigeria has the capacity uh, to do that. Our military, for me, I believe in our military. I believe in the men and women that we have. The leadership might not be what it's supposed to be, but they are there. They, they are yearning to go after these people. But we've heard reports from them. We, we saw reports whereby uh, it was said that our soldiers are being fed once a day. How are you feeding somebody once a day and you expect him to be able to fight for you? How are you not taking care of somebody's need? We saw a, uh, we saw a video recently. I don't know how true that video is. I haven't seen the military come and deploy it where a soldier was supposed was giving permission pass to go to visit his family. He got to the motor park and he couldn't afford to travel to his own home because the uh, petrol has increased. He had been in Bono for two, th he said, I think about three years. So he didn't know that there was this increase in, 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 in transportation. And he said he was going back because he couldn't afford it. And I just sat down to imagine how come is it that the military aren't giving them money that we take them or even have the transportation system to take them back to their families and take them uh, uh, back home. So yes, we have it, but the political will is what we do not have. And the question we should all be asking, who is benefiting from all of this terrorism? Who is benefiting from all of this kidnapping? Who, is it a conduit pipe for some people? Is it opportunity for some people to make money? Is it only the terrorists and the boot? Is there connivance somewhere between security agencies, political class, you know, some citizens, whatever it is? We need to settle that puzzle because if we put our minds to it as Nigerians, as a nation that we are, we can take care of this problem. It's not bigger than us. But hey, we've not done anything. And right now, I've been asking for several years, who, who is taking care of our forests? We are being encycled, and nothing seems to be done about it. All that uh, some people seem to care about is looting and how they can get more moments. Mm. Oh. Well, very interesting, and uh, we'll say thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, it's all in a bid to see a better Nigeria, and uh, we, of course, welcome your thoughts um, always. Thank you very much for your time once again, and we wish you a very beautiful uh, day ahead. Thank you so much for having me. Well done.